everybody, I'm FG, and it is that time again. It is time for another Oxygen Not Included Patch Report. The newest update is live now for the new-ish spaced out DLC called No Earthly Resin. The resin has mostly to do with stuff that's like further down the line eventually. Um, to bring the DLC more in line with the main game. But there are quite a few actual big changes. Um, two, the two main things that got changed really are uh, more rocketry stuff. The rockets and the capsules have been changed. Um, they're a little bit easier to use because you don't have to cram. Like, you still have to cram lots of stuff into that tiny little capsule that you get for your little duplicant, which we'll take a look at later. But you can now connect that to the other modules in the rocket, thus making it a little bit easier to manage the inside. So what actually got added? First of all, power outlet, liquid intake output fittings, gas intake output fittings, and conveyor receptacle loader fittings. So that's basically all the stuff that you can, so you can combine the inside with the outside. Um, which is really, really helpful because if you've looked inside that rocket, it's tiny, especially if you take the tiny module, it is, it is, ins like, it's insanely small. It's so, 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 so small. So this is very, very, very welcome. And it's going to make building the rockets and managing the rockets a little bit easier and a little bit more uh, newcomer friendly as well. They added new modules and updated modules from the base game. So we get the new battery module for rockets, which stores excess power generated by a rocket engine and ground facilities. So uh, you actually have a way now to, to power the inside and you don't have to build and cram in a hamster wheel and a battery inside because that was always really annoying and kind of almost impossible uh, with that change comes that the rocket engine now actually generates some power while in flight so your duplicate that's sitting inside the capsule doesn't suddenly run out of power because that would be very bad we now get a scanner module that will allow, allow our rockets to explore unexplored space and reveal tiles as they go uh, revealing tiles on the cluster map with a telescope or scanner module peeks at other nearby tiles, giving hints as to where other planets might be. So that's just basically a way to compensate telescopes because telescopes has a have a max range. And you have to build one on the main starting world, explore with it, and then you have to build some one somewhere else and then explore around that planetoid with a telescope. And this helps a little bit to alleviate necessarily the need of having to place one on every single other planetoid that you find. Uh, that's very, very good. Uh, and then we got the hydrogen engine and the liquid oxidizer tank added for the spaced out stuff. And cryofuel propulsion tech was added to the research screen. So that is all the stuff that's in, in rocketry. So basically, lots of adaptions and then some additions from base game, which is very nice. We're going to look at them in a little bit. And then we've got new things to look at in the cluster. We get two new planetoids and moonlets or whatever you want to call them. One is the Mu moonlet and the other one is the water moonlet, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. They added a new point of interest, the resin rooster, which appears on newly generated marshy moonlets. Uh, with Arden sound and work in progress, so we need to look for that as well. They added a resin and graphite to the game plus the recipe for it which is uh precursors to iso resin and fullerene which we've seen in base game as well so basically it's just adding or translating more base game stuff to the dlc which uh is good because that means you can do more in the dlc now which is really really neat and then a couple of other uh minor changes the suit durability now is a custom game setting, which is really nice. So you can fiddle with that if you like and make it easier or more difficult if you like to, you know, struggle when you play games. <laughs> and uh, new effects added to rocket modules to indicate when a rocket is ready to launch. And now without further ado, let's actually look at those changes. And here we have the wonderful water moonlet. And yes, it is exactly that. It is just a giant asteroid filled with 
so much water. <laughs> it's insane. I love it. There is just like if you look at this, there's just water everywhere. I don't even I don't even want to know how much water this is. <laughs> but it's uh it's amazing. There is so much water. Um, so if you ever run out of water, fear no more. You get loads of water right here and you can just ferry it back and forth with uh, rocketry, I suppose. It also comes with a couple of um, geysers. Though for some reason, it didn't actually spawn one right there, which is, which is intriguing. But uh, supposedly it comes with a polluted water vent and a salt water geyser. Though, for some reason, they're not actually showing up, because I assume one is back here. And then the other one is down there. But for some reason, they're not showing up on my on my lovely little map here. But, yeah, it's just a giant reservoir of clean, hot, warm, warm, warmish water. That's what the water moonlit is. And then here we have our lovely moo moonlet. It is full of natural gas, chlorine, and all the gassy moose you could possibly ever want. Also, gas grass. So we finally have gassy moose in the DLC. And this is where you grab them. There's loads. Also lots of extra liquid chlorine, which is really nice. Um, there are no geysers on this map, uh, and I don't think this planetoid ever spawns with any either. Um, you just get loads and loads of chlorine, and natural gas, and lovely gassy moose. Alright, and then let's get right down to all of the lovely different engines. Gosh, space is so loud in this game, I forget about that. So we've got, um, now, in addition to all of the engines that we get in the DLC, we now have the... Uh, hydrogen engine also in the game so we can now um there's the battery module which is for power that looks definitely not stable i like it i like it rovers module or orbital cargo module we've already had all of those Tra trailblazer module the fuel tanks etc etc cargo tanks we all know those those are the ones that have been in the game for quite a while all right and then we'll build the space uh fera nose cone and then inside of that we can go inside and then have a look see it and just float in space so it obviously has a rocket control station and then inside what we can do is you can grab these lovely things because you just squeeze your duplicate and all the things they need into this. <laughs> into this lovely little, um, uh, well, how many tiles is it? I don't know. It's very small. It's like two, four, six, six by three plus four by two plus two. So that's very small. Like six by three is what? 18? 2022 you get 22 tiles to do with whatever you want so you can get now power from the battery module so you don't have to put in a hamster wheel anymore you don't have to put in a battery you can get a liquid intake and liquid liquid output though i i'm not sure how we, how you'd get rid of the excess p and you'd have to like somehow do deal stuff with like um oxygen and that sort of stuff but you can you can now play around with and supply it supply the inside of your rocket with uh all of the stuff that you get from the outside so there's intake outpost so i guess if you've got a bathroom you can put a toilet in here now uh you just need clean and dirty water uh on your rocket and then can you rotate these yes so you can also uh, supply and take out gases and then you need to squeeze in just a few more things here and there easy peasy but at least we don't have to fit in everything anymore you can now do some stuff outside of the rocket thank you so much for watching don't forget to comment like and subscribe i will see you soon take care and have a lovely rest of your day bye bye